guys, it's Sarah and today is Booklist Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library. And every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or book topic that we want to talk about for the week. And this week we are going to be talking about historical fiction. This is a genre that a lot of people seem to really like and the ones who really like it get very passionate about it. Now, something we realized is that when you talk about historical fiction, a lot of times we kind of default to World War II historical fiction, which usually takes place in Germany or Italy or um, Poland or, you know, something, something European. Now, we decided we are going to talk about historical fiction, but we're going to talk about historical fiction that took place in America. So American historical fiction. There are five books that I have read, a couple of them I've read recently, and they all are based on American history. The first one that I read most recently, actually, well, these first two, is um, My Dear Hamilton, and this is by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoe. This follows Eliza Hamilton, and during the time where she is growing up, she meets Alexandra Hamilton, they get married, they have their life together. It, it follows her entire life. Now, I was asked questions when I was reading this about how accurate this is. Is this historically accurate? No, it is not. The things about Alexander Hamilton and the people that he encounters, like, you know, President Jefferson and Madison and Burr and all that stuff is historically accurate because all of that is documented really, really well in history. Eliza is not documented very well. So they had to take a lot of liberties and they have a whole section in the back where they talk about what they took liberties with and why. And a lot of it is because not a whole lot is documented about her. So they kind of had to take some things and make some assumptions and give her, you know, more of a voice in certain things. And uh, so it's not historically accurate, I would say, as far as the main character Eliza goes, but as far as things that happened in our history and when they happened, that is accurate. So does, if I hope that makes sense. But um, I really, really enjoyed this book. It is a big book for what it is, um, but I still really enjoyed it. It's written really well. The writing is really approachable. It's very easy to read. Sometimes with historical fiction, uh, I get a little bit nervous about, you know, the language in it and is it going to make sense and I'm going to be able to follow it. This is fantastic for that. So I really like the way that it was written. And I definitely highly recommend it, especially if, you know, you've watched Hamilton and you're interested in that. Definitely, I would pick this one up. The next one is the most recent one that I finished, and this one's a big old chunk or two, but that is North and South by John Jakes. This is the first book in the North and South trilogy. So um, I've only read the first one. I have not read the other two books yet. I do plan to. But this first book, we meet two of our main characters, Ori, Maine, and... George Hazard. Now, they meet at West Point. This is set in the 1800s. They meet at West Point. They are both there, you know, going through the military training and everything. Uh, Ori is from South Carolina. George is from Pennsylvania, so north and south. <laughs> and they become very fast friends. They become best friends. This friendship carries out throughout their entire lives. Now, it gets a little tricky when um, the Civil War hits because that's during this time period and they are both in the army and, mm, you know, it, it was a little tricky back then. So the thing with this is that you follow both of them. They are not always all together. You know, they live in their own states, but they're still corresponding. They're still trying to visit each other. They still see each other consistently. They write letters like they are friends. They go through a lot, though. Um, they go through some really hard times in their friendship. They go through things that really test their friendship. Um, they live very different lives because, you know, Ori lives in the South on a plantation. He owns a plantation. They own slaves. Um, George is very much against this. Uh, one of his family members is Oh, so against it. She's um, a little off her rocker about it. And um, so, you know, that causes a rift in their friendship as well. And you see that happen. And just their families are very in intimately inter intertwined. That's the word I'm trying to find. Um, and it just, 
it makes it very complicated with the Civil War and the things that were happening back then. So um, it's fantastic. I think it's a great documentation of our history as well with, you know, things like that with the war and with, you know, slavery and uh, things that were happening around that time period with, you know, the presidencies and the South trying to say, we're going to be our own nation. <laughs> no, you're not. So like it was, it was crazy, but um, so good drama filled amazing characters and I just I loved it. So this first book actually only goes up until you're starting to see the Civil War brewing. So this is like a lot of um, the backstory of the country and things like that and then I believe the second book covers the Civil War and then the third book is the aftermath. So um, yeah but high recommend. This is a five-star read for me. Loved it. Okay the other three books I do not either own or they are in boxes somewhere. Uh, the first one is Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. Now this one follows an orphanage in Tennessee that is a real orphanage and it was run by a real woman named Georgia Tan and oh, this woman <laughs> she would steal children and I mean, I'm not kidding. She would kidnap children either from their homes or she would kidnap them from the hospitals when they were born, tell the parents that their child is dead. And then she would raise them up in this orphanage and then sell them to very rich, prominent families. Uh, she was definitely looking for beautiful children that would be desirable to people with money. This is a real thing that happened. It really happened. And, oh man, um, in this book though, this is, since it is a historical fiction, we follow our main character who's, um, who has family ties to this orphanage. And she is trying to research all these things. She's figuring out things that are tied to her family and she's trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so you actually see her figuring all this stuff out kind of in present day time. And then you are going back and following the children that are in this orphanage at that time as well. And you're seeing what they're going through. And it was horrific what they went through. And um, you see how it was able to happen. You see Georgia Tan, like that's her name in the book too. And how she was able to get away with this for so long. It's crazy. And I think actually some famous actors back in the day, like when this was going on, some famous people bought children from her most likely not knowing, um, obviously not knowing like what was actually going on, but they adopted from her and paid those fees. Oh man, I can't even imagine. So it was very, very good. It is a hard read because it's, you know, obviously a lot of child abuse and things like that that are happening at this place, but it was eye opening and I was Googling way too much just trying to see like the actual things that were happening and comparing them to what was happening in the book. Mm -mm. So very good read, five stars, but it is a heavy topic. Okay, the next one. <laughs> Let's talk about Stephen King. Stay with me. Yes, Stephen King has written a historical fiction. Now, um, he takes a different twist on it because he's Stephen King, that's what he does. And he wrote 11 63 which is the date that John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. So the way that Stephen King wrote this it follows that day it it follows events that lead up to it and then the actual occurrence of that the way that stephen king decided to do it was he took a time travel element to this now <laughs> it was brilliant i loved this book it is this big but oh my gosh like that's actually a book i want to reread and i don't even have a physical copy of it i think when i read it i read it on my kindle and i remember walking around my house we lived in tucson at the time and i was walking around my house with my kindle trying to do things but i would not put the book down <laughs> like i had it in my hand and i was like wiping the table because i did not want to put this book down it was so good and yeah, so that is one that I want to get a physical copy for my shelves. I want to reread it at some point. Definitely. I absolutely loved it. And so it follows a man who I don't remember exactly how how he figured out. I kind of remember how he figured out how he can time travel. It was all by accident. Anyway, so he figures out that he can time travel. Um, and then he finds himself face to face with... Um, Lee Harvey 
Oswald, who is the man who assassinated President Kennedy. So uh, he finds himself face to face with this man, realizes who he is because he's, you know, this our characters from the future and he knows exactly what happened. And he struggles with the moral dilemma on should I stop this person? Because I know exactly what he's about to do. So, so good. I loved this book so much. It was a definite five star for me. And again, something that I would absolutely reread in a heartbeat, even though it's a brick. But eventually, at some point, I will get my own copy and I will do that. But loved it. And the last one that I'd like to recommend is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. And this book follows Lizzie Borden. So Lizzie Borden is our main character in this book. And Lizzie Borden is a woman who was mm, accused but never convicted of a double homicide that happened in her home. I think it was her father and her stepmother from what I remember. It was the late 1800s that this happened. And um, so her father and I believe her stepmother were both brutally, I mean like with an ax, <laughs> brutally killed in this house. And uh, I believe that Lizzie was home at the time. Therefore, she was the suspect, but could never be actually convicted. There was never evidence to actually be able to convict her. And so she never served time for it. And she lived her life in that house. And up until her death, she was in that house. Uh, yeah, so it's a very interesting story to me. And I would like to read some more uh, like nonfiction about this because this is a historical fiction that's based on it. So I don't know how much of this book actually is, you know, based on the the real happenings and the real story. I'm not quite sure about that. But I did really enjoy the book. And I it definitely made me want to learn more about this actual story. Now, a fun fact about this, I just found this out is that that house is 45 minutes from me <laughs> right now. <laughs> and it's currently a bed and breakfast. It's the original house. Um, and you could actually stay there if you want to. You could stay in Lizzie Borden's room, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, and you can also take daily tours of the house. So I'm definitely going to try to see if my husband would want to go with me one day and do that. I don't want to take my girls. They don't need to hear about all that stuff. But, um, you know, one day when they're in school, you know, since it's only 45 minutes away, we could sneak over there and go do that. But yeah, uh, it's in Fall River, Massachusetts. So um, I think that's pretty cool that it's right there. I, I didn't know that until uh, literally earlier this week, I found that out. And I was like, Oh, I need to go because I actually kind of know that story. And, um, you know, maybe while we're there, I could grab a book like a nonfiction book about it, you know, get a good recommendation for that. So Definitely would recommend this one as well if if Lizzie Borden is someone that you are wanting to get to know a little bit more about and um, or if you already know the story about Lizzie Borden and you want like a kind of historical fiction take on it, I would recommend that one. Okay guys, those are some historical fiction books that take place in America and that are based on our actual history. So I hope that was informative. And I know that a lot of times when we talk about historical fiction, we go overseas. So we want to talk about some that were kind of um, based on our own history. I think that's pretty interesting. So uh, let me know down below some of your recommendations for American historical fiction. Let me know that down below, please. And make sure you go check out Lindsay and see what book she's going to talk about today. I'm really excited to see what she's going to talk about. And we will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.